around back. Hey guys, we're back again. Um, I don't know why we keep getting shut down, um, but we do this morning. Um, and uh, for those of you just joining, we we'll ask you if you would go ahead and share this out and build this audience for us. We're on the reservation, uh, White Eagle Reservation, and uh, we were just talking about the community garden. as a 12 acre community garden used for the elder program, uh, used for the diabetics. Um, and what, what were you saying about that garden? Well, what I was, what I was getting, the point is that we, we grew this huge garden for, and we wanted to be able to, to provide tools for our, our elders, our diabetic program, and for the children at the Head Start. And the grandmothers and grandfathers would bring the kids out and teach them about gardening and teach them about, you know, growing their own food and trying to eat healthy and, and live healthy. Um, we've, we had a lot of vegetables that were left over after the community got what they needed and uh, we, we wanted to market some of those vegetables to the supermarkets in town and we, we took them a uh, proposal to sell organic. We'd grown everything organically and we found out that nothing that we can grow on the reservation can be classified as organic because of the contamination from the refinery and from the, the uh, carbon black plant that's up here right now we're driving by uh, part of the power plant so this is a bunch of uh, power lines and stuff that part of the infrastructure from the Oklahoma General Electric this is the old Oklahoma General Electric plant that's here it's contaminated with asbestos and a whole bunch of other good chemicals that, uh, that kill people and that is directly on the river the river is directly below that building that you're seeing there you see the disused building at the back? The river runs right behind that. So uh -huh. I was telling Kevin that we're, we're driving by basically our hunting grounds on each side of the, of the reservation in these two rivers. And the deer, the turkey, the rabbits, the squirrels, and the fish that are in the rivers uh, supplement a lot of our diet. And our, and our people don't have a large income to go and buy a lot of groceries. So there's a lot of families that hunt. And there's a lot of uh, young men that hunt and take the food to families that need it and elders that need it. But when you think about it, that we can't grow organic food on our on our reservation because the, the vegetables are contaminated, what that tells us is that all of the food, the food source for this wild game is also contaminated, which means the meat from the game is contaminated and the water is contaminated with the fish kills that we've been having because of the fracking waste being dumped in. So. We don't have a way to be self-sufficient or sustain ourselves without contaminating ourselves. And uh, that's a reality here on the Ponca Reservation. That it, it seems like every time that we try to come up with a new way to promote healthy living or, or self-sufficiency, we're shot down because of the, uh, the hazardous waste that's in the ground, the water, and the air. So just to clarify for the people that are coming in, this is, Ponca Nation is not a rich nation, it's an exceedingly, uh, it's a low income area here, so the people don't have a massive amount of disposable income, so they supplement their diet here by growing their own food by, and by hunting. And then because of this, and what, what's this we're looking at, because this is gross. So this is a carbon plant. This is called uh, Carbon Black, it's the only name I've ever known it by, but um, it's actually called Continental Carbon, and it's uh, owned by a Taiwanese company. Um, this plant got sued in a class action lawsuit by the, some residents on the Ponca Nation. There was a community, a uh, little small housing just on the other side of this. I'll show you when we go around the corner. And uh, the people that lived in that housing were dying from a, a whole array of health issues. And there was a, a buyout that took place. They actually won a lawsuit. And a lot of uh, other people from the south side, of, the south side of Ponca City is a low income side. So there's a lot of uh, Hispanic people, uh, black people, and low income white people that live on the south side as well as the, the Ponca people, my people. And our reservation is on the south side of town outside. So a lot of people joined the class action lawsuit some people got a little bit of money. Um, the houses in this community that, I'm, that we're going to drive by over here got bought out, and those people were given a, a settlement and able to move. Since they moved, almost every single person has died. Everybody that lived in that housing is gone. All the elders and, and a lot of people that, you know, that weren't elders 
have lost their lives due to the health issues that occurred from living next to this plant. The carbon particles that go in the air can be airborne for up to 10 days that, that come out of this plant right here. I mean, it's not healthy for us to be sitting here right now breathing. Um, I'm not breathing. If you walk through the grass, I have white tennis shoes on. If I went out and walked through the grass in the ditches right here, it would turn my feet black, turn these shoes black. You can see the trees, the color of the trees um, right, right behind that telephone pole. You see that tree? It's black. That's not the natural color of the bark for these trees. It should be more gray. But these Let's trees are show black. Them. <laughs> I'm going to show you. I'll shut the door for you guys. We're just going to walk out here. You can see. You can see how dark these trees are. I don't know if you can physically see this um, yourselves, but you know how trees are usually a light brown? That's a dark. Those trees are clearly a different color. Look at that telephone pole. If you look at the pole itself, you can see how dirty that is. So, and it's just disgusting. It's horrible. And I mean, this is big. I mean, if you just look at the size of this thing. I mean, you start in here. That's all right. I'm going to die sometime, folks. We're all going to die sometime. If it's my time, it's my time. We're going to jump back in it. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're, on a, we're on a schedule, so we don't really want a security stop. <laughs> but you said this was Taiwanese-owned. Yes, it's a it's a foreign company from Taiwan that owns this uh, Continental Carbon. Um, I was just telling Stephanie that down here to our right is kind of a natural wetlands, a marsh down in the bottom there. Uh huh. And you can see the river through there. Uh, maybe up here you'll see it a little bit. Yeah, I can see the river. So through these trees, the other side of the trees, they've got the they've got the river. And if you, it's hard to see with the with the camera, but you can see the difference in the color of of, of everything here. It's like got this murky color to it, like like it's been dusted in a gray dust, basically. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of animal life, um, frogs and stuff that are that are deformed that come out of this wetlands down here, and the the deer that live in this area are sick and um, they have some type of uh, I don't know like growths that have been on them. Um, just just weird stuff happening to the animals that drink this water from this wetlands down here and that that live close to this You know to this plant So I look at if you just look at the <laughs> that that plant that we just showed a couple of years ago Got a brand new paint job. So everything was like brand new. It looked real nice and blue and shiny And uh, now it's turning black again and Everything you can see that that tree right there Oh That's my a cottonwood tree. God. So the bark on that tree should be white. And you can see that up on the higher limbs, the, the new limbs are the white. new limb, but yeah, the, you can. But One the sec. trunk is black. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see like about middle of frame right now, there's a white branch. That's the, that's the original color of the tree. It's supposed to be where the new limb's coming in. And then if you look at the rest of the tree, you can see that the rest of the tree is actually that dirty brown and black color. Many relatives in Ponca City and they have skin sores that never go away. In, in Terry, Terry, Terry Buffalo Head, I see you and I'm glad I'm able to be here for you talking about your reservation. Hey Terry. <laughs> so I, I wanted to bring uh, Kevin here and I, and I feel bad about bringing him and his companion here knowing that they're being contaminated from the air that they're breathing here. And, uh, but I, I wanted them to see where I live and, and what's happening to my people. That uh, the environmental genocide that, that's taking place on this reservation by all these different factors, these different uh, environmental stressors that, that happen here are all also a, a part of environmental racism because these plants are being zoned 
by the city of Ponca City, by the city council and their zoning laws, they zone everything that's hazardous and everything that's contaminable to the south side of town so that they can poison not only the the indigenous Ponca people here that's our reservations on the south side of town, but they're also poisoning their own people. There's 40,000 people in the city of Ponca City and the south side of town is the low income side of town. So they're systematically killing off the poor people and the Native American people. And I, I feel that, uh, that there's a huge lawsuit that, that should happen here for environmental racism and that uh, my tribe, I hope that in the, in the near future, will be suing the city of Ponca City for environmental racism and suing the ConocoPhillips Corporation for environmental genocide for killing my people. So we're coming up here on the highway. We're gonna cross uh, Highway 177, uh, which runs north and south in and, in and out of Ponca City, Oklahoma. Um, if you look over to the right, uh, this is the, the start of the power plant, or excuse me, of the refinery. That's what I showed you guys coming into town last night. Uh, part of, I showed you the front side of that. Um, One of the scariest things uh, about this refinery, I mean, the, the constant pollution in the air is bad enough, and the constant pollution into the ground and the groundwater is bad enough, but there's sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid that's being produced in this plant. If, if there's a break in the one of the cells that is holding the hydrochloric acid, it kills every living thing in a 15 mile radius. So living in an earthquake capital of the world, that's one of our biggest fears is that we have a big earthquake and it ruptures one of those cells and the hydrochloric acid leaks out. It not only kills everybody on my reservation, but it kills all 40,000 people in the city of Ponca City and all the surrounding uh, farming communities that are around here. And I mean, how do you tell your kids that? How do you tell your, the, the ones that you love that they're basically in a, a disaster area and one earthquake that we can't predict when or where it's gonna happen could kill us all. And uh, that, that's one of the realities that we live with here on the, on the Ponca Reservation. So to the left is the Ponca Iron. This is a recycling plant. And uh, this used to be in the middle of town. And they found that it was due to the rains and the waters that wash off of everything here. The asbestos was getting into the ground. And a lot of the contaminants were getting into the ground. And it, it was just really ugly eyesore. So they thought it better to bring it out here to the south side of town and put it uh, adjacent to our reservation. So you, so what, so what you're telling us is that whenever there's anything that is hazardous, that doesn't look nice, they move it from where the it can be seen in town, and they pull it into the south side here, which is the which is your nation, which is also the poorer side of town, and they constantly doing that, even to the point of moving things that were originally in town and bringing them out here because it's too much of an eyesore for town. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And then we're driving wow. on the back side of the refinery right here. Um, I, I can't, I'm going to try to drive slow, but I can't really drive too slow or we're going to stop at one point up here. But these tanks, you can see the bronze that are built around these tanks. They're kind of like a little dike that's built around each tank. Okay. Um, each tank leaks 3% of its holdings. So they build these little dikes around them to, to contain the leakage. Well, that leakage goes directly into our groundwater. Our groundwater is only eight. But it's only three percent. It's okay. Three percent wow. of hundreds of thousands of barrels that are that are held in each tank. So, this is the biggest tank farm in the state of Oklahoma. And if you imagine each one leaking three percent. So these hold roughly how much? Um, there's different tanks, but they, oh. they hold hundreds of thousands of, wow. thousands of barrels. Is that smell again? That is disgusting. Okay, you can see these signs that we're driving by. They all say restricted area, private property, no trespassing. Uh huh. You have video stuff. No, we're fine. People are still, someone said that. And uh, so if we drive too slow or we're stopped, we're subject to get harassed by the, the security. Um, They'll come and say it's a homeland security issue. Um, this is one of the leech ponds that these these are usually running. 
uh, these little concrete things are usually running and they run down into the ditch and then they cross this little creek right here and goes directly into the river. So these these concrete things I want you here. To get that sign right there, Kevin. Alright, this is the sign here just so you can see guys. This sign says for security reasons. If you can see it, no standing, stopping, parking, or photography in this area. Specific information. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We'll get the we'll get the phone number. People, if you want to throw this phone number up, one five eight zero seven six seven seven one three zero. Someone put that in the comments and ask them why the hell they've got that. What security reasons? They just hiding. So these dikes you see, these are running off the these are running off the leaching straight down over the other side onto the farmland right here. Yeah, there's a little and creek that runs through the middle here and I, the creek, that creek used to be named Spring Creek. <laughs> on the north side of town it's called Spring Creek, but on the south side of town the name of that creek is now Stink Creek. Spr and, Spring Creek becomes Stink Creek and that is... And when I was younger um, we had an epidemic for a long time of the, the res dogs on the reservation all had mange so the hair was falling out and we found that we could take our dogs and throw them in street in the creek in stink creek and there was enough chemicals in there to kill the mange and the dogs would grow their hair back um, so that just tells you the amount of chemicals that's running out of this refinery and going into that water is enough to kill the mange on a dog um, it, it, it just, they go. this is the wheat Field that I was telling you that this is a wheat field. That's a wheat field. The green that you're seeing oh. out there is winter wheat. That wheat was planted in the fall, and it will be harvested in the summer. So it's winter wheat, and it's inside of the refinery. And that wheat will be harvested and taken to that grain elevator straight over there, and mixed in with all the other grain that's grown around this area. And it's going to go into your the bread that you eat. Yeah, who wants some nice, nice fresh bread from Ponca City full of uh, sulfuric acid and petroleum and God knows what else? I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm sad. It's horrible. Really horrible. This is, dis this is despicable that anyone could be treated like this. That we could put this anywhere on the earth, but to actually be deliberately putting it in one spot, um, that's. Dis disgusting, so disgusting. So where we're gonna go now, Kevin, is uh, we're gonna turn south from the refinery because if we stay up around the refinery too long, um, the security is gonna come and catch up to us. Um, I try to kind of hit and miss the security when I do these tours. <laughs> so um, we're gonna turn south here, and and we're gonna we're gonna change our focus from the environmental genocide that I was just showing you. From the refinery <coughs> to the environmental racism by the, the city of Ponca City. So we're on our way uh, about a mile and a half south of the refinery and we're gonna go to our burial grounds, to the Ponca Tribe burial grounds. And the Ponca Tribal burial grounds was chosen in 1880 as uh, this was one of the highest points on the reservation. And our people wanted to be able to go up there and pray to the four winds and be able to look to the north, to our homelands, to our ancestral homelands and, and pray to our ancestors that we had to leave behind. Um, since that time, the city of Ponca City has chosen this exact site for their landfill. So all of the trash from Ponca City, a 40,000 municipality of 40,000 people comes out here to our burial grounds, Punk City Landfill. Um, this is the north gate to the Punk City Landfill right here. Um, maybe we should run up there real quick. Yeah, we're gonna run up to the north gate. Helena, I, I see you about the Sable Trail. I understand about what's going on in Florida and uh, that we do need people to notice that. Feel free to put some information in the feed about that. I do see you and I have been talking about it for you. I can't be everywhere at the same time. I'm sorry. Um, so we're driving up the, the driveway to the north gate of the Ponca City landfill. And like I was saying, this if, if you can see over here to the left, Kevin, this everything that's up above this field right here is trash. So 
that's a landfill and, and that hill never used to be there. We call it Trash Mountain. Um, that Trash Mountain never used to be there. We used to be able to come up on the hill. There's a hill on the other side of that where the cemetery is. That's what I'm going to show you. Um, this, I don't know why. I mean, if you even in the oldest westerns, the, the dumbest old western movies, John Wayne even respects a, a, a native burial ground, you know. But, so this, what we're looking at right now, is a native is right by your native burial ground. Yeah, so so the city of Punk City has no respect for the people from which it derives its name from. All of this that you're seeing in front of you is a landfill. That hill, that mountain right there is is trash underneath there. And they, they dig holes and you can see where they're stripping all the dirt from behind us to cover up the trash in front of us. And this hole that, that's been dug out here in front of us is the dirt that they're using to cover the trash. I'm going to jump up because it's easier up. to show them. So what you're looking into right now, that's the hole they've dug out. This is the dump site right here. You can see in the distance. And then behind us is where they're drinking everything out from. So if you look behind us, that's where it's all coming out from. <laughs> I'm not worried about the city security, uh, the dump security, um, as much as the refinery security, because they can call Homeland Security on us. Yeah, we don't want Homeland Security. <laughs> yeah, please don't. <laughs> I'll tell you a story another time where we don't want Homeland Security to come and chat with Kevin right now. It's a great story, guys, and those that have been following me online since Columbia will know all about it. <laughs> yeah, I've had my run-ins. Oh man, <laughs> I'm a green card holder <laughs> and it got stolen in Colombia and there's been a saga since about June of trying to replace, oh. the, replace it. And actually this Friday I'm supposed to be getting my fingerprints and photographs done for the replacement in Minneapolis. But they told me on Monday and I said, you know what guys, I can't be there because I'm going to be down here with you guys for this. So uh, yet again I missed my appointment and we send it back through the system to wait for another one. Meantime, if I get stopped without my green card, I get to tell a really long, boring story. <laughs> so, so that was the north gate of the the city dump, the city landfill. That gate never used to be there. They only put that gate in uh, about three years ago. The the gate that was always used, uh, you know, since uh, this landfill was built, is this south gate that I'm getting ready to show you. One of the things that's really sad is when we, we Ponca people have been dying at an average rate of one per week on a yearly average about 56 deaths a year. There's only 3,600 tribal members. So when we lose a relative, we come down this road in a funeral procession. And when you're trying to come up to the burial grounds to bury your family member, and you have to stop and wait for the trash trucks to turn into the dump in front of you or when the trash trucks don't have enough respect to wait and they jump in the funeral procession it, it's just really disheartening um, I don't know if you guys can see but this little waterway this ditch that's concrete here uh, next to the road everything that runs off of this dump runs into that so just down down at the side of the road what we're talking about here all the all the waste from the dump the water runs down into this ditch and then that ditch goes directly underneath this road and runs into the river right here you, you can, can just the, about the, see the river you can see the bend of the river right there yeah and if you're looking i'm just going to zoom in for you this guys this is some type of a leech pond i don't know what it holds but it's got a liner in it just a plastic liner everything if anything that fails in that liner goes directly into the river as well so in that river where we're at right now we're about two and a half miles north of the community where we started this at this morning two and a half miles north of my community of white eagle oklahoma our reservation we are on reservation uh original jurisdiction uh, reservation land right now but it's it's checkerboarded it's spotted um, which parts are still reservation land and which parts are not because of the, the Dawes Act and uh, 
uh, when they split our land up and land was sold. That, that's a whole other story. But so this is the dump. And I mean, we just this is literally I don't know, 60 feet high mound of trash. This whole thing is trash. You can see some of it blowing. It's disgusting. Yeah, when when the north wind blows and we have a big storm come. This field gets littered with trash. The trash is stuck to this fence. They tried to plant cedar trees to catch some of the trash, but this this trash all blows to the south. And, and this is what I think I see coming up on the left. This is your cemetery, right? And this is our cemetery. This is a... Am I okay to still continue filming? Yes. Okay. This is the Ponca Tribal Cemetery. So I'm just gonna show you this. If we stop here, I'm gonna show you literally, if I show you here, this is the north entrance to the dump. The south entrance. Oh, sorry, the south entrance, I can't even read. And then if I literally just pan the camera while sat here to the other side of the road, there's the cemetery. So the reason, can you put that on? The reason why I, I brought Kevin up here is I, I want to show the environmental racism that we experience here as Ponca people from the city of Ponca City. They use our name. That's not their name. We, we're the Ponca people. Yet they, they use our name, Ponca City. But they put their dump, their landfill here on our burial grounds, our most sacred hollow ground. And if, if you notice, Kevin, first thing that you see when you come into the cemetery are these white stones. And I'm gonna drive you around here and we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you how many white stones are in here. Those are, those are veterans. Those are veterans of war. Every white stone that you're gonna see is a veteran here in the Punk Cemetery. We have so a, right now we're looking at three, we're just, uh, just right as we come in, there's three right there. We have a really high enlistment rate. Our, our people are proud warriors. And we have a war memorial over here that I'm gonna show you. And so it's not just that the city of Ponca City is using environmental racism to keep us oppressed and uh, disrespecting us as a people, but they're disrespecting the veterans of the United States uh, Army, the Marines, the Navy, and the Air Force, the, the men and women that serve to protect this country. And this, this is a veteran cemetery as well as a tribal cemetery. My grandma's buried here. My grandpa's buried here. This is actually, I'm gonna show you. This, this is my grandfather's grave right here. Joseph Wesley Farmer. My name's my name's Wesley. My middle name's Wesley. This is who I was named after. And he was a World War II veteran for the US Navy. And the list goes on and on. How many of our people served the country? Our people enlisted before they were even recognized as citizens. Our people were enlisted and given their lives to protect this country. Yet the city of Ponca City has the audacity to put their landfill, their dump, on our cemetery. Now, look at all these veterans graves, these white stones. It's, it, it looks like a, a veteran cemetery because so many of our men and women served this country. And to, to be disrespected at this level is uh it's heartbreaking and i are we okay to get out at the memorial and just yeah. show some of this stuff i have a really hard time uh controlling my emotions up here it's hard to not cry i feel it i can feel it my, this is where our children are buried this is where our mothers and fathers are this is where our brothers and sisters are and to have somebody come and just put their trash here, it breaks our hearts and uh, and it makes us mad. Lots of times I thought about everybody save their trash and then let's take it to town and, and dump it on their cemetery. But we're no, we know better. We, we're taught better. We know to respect somebody else's graves, to respect somebody else's sacred burial grounds. And uh, I don't know what to do. That's why I brought Kevin here and I'm asking for the world to know what's happening to my people here. Not only are we dying because of the environmental genocide that we're subjected to in this area, but we're being broken down and oppressed by environmental racism. 
And uh, I just want to say thank you, you know, Kevin, to you and your companion for coming here and, and allowing me to to show you this and, and using your media outlet to, to get this story out to the rest of the world. So. You, you're most you're the most welcome. I, I don't really know what to say. I'm I'm struggling not to cry myself because this is so this is so disgusting, and and I can feel it from you. I can feel the energy from you. I can feel how you're trying to control so many things right now as well. And you have every right to be completely angry, but you realize that anger isn't gonna make any <laughs> gonna make any difference. So I commend you for for the, for the way you're talking about this and and the way you're sharing this story from with, without being rude or derogatory about other people the people that have put put this situation on you um let's i'm going to take a little walk outside and just show some people some so just kind of some of these uh some of these memorials and i mean literally as i get out the car as i get out the car here this is the first thing you see okay Black about our code talkers. Um, we had code talkers that used our language to help in the world wars and uh, help help win freedom for the United States and for all of us that, that enjoy our freedoms that we have today. Um, I want to read this to you. I, I know that I know that you can see this, but I also want to read it to you. It said, "When the bugle call for military service arose." Many brave Ponca answered. Some did so before they were citizens of this great country. This dedication and honor has always been a strong trait among the Ponca people. If, and you see the names of how many. I told you that my, my tribe's small. I have 3,600 tribal members. grounds of the Ponca people also to desecrate the burial grounds of the war veterans that are buried here. I just did a quick count and, and that is, there's, there's over 100, 200, 300, 400, there's about 400 and about 410 people who have given their lives and that's, you said 3,600 people, that's more than, that's more than 10% of your, that's more than 10% of your tribe, yeah, your think, nation. I think that That's, I think that it's closer to, you know, around a thousand. Um, I want to make note that right here is the name Carter Camp. This is my uncle. This is my mom's brother. And I, I've been in many struggles, many fights, and many journeys with this man. Uh, he's since left us and taken his journey to the other side. But Carter Camp was a co-founder of the American Indian Movement and was in Wounded Knee in 1973 and uh, fought for... Uh, civil rights for American Indian people, human rights for all people, and uh, stood up for the environment on many occasions. And uh, he was also a veteran of the Army and uh, enlisted and spent his time, you know, to, to serve this country. So I, I just wanted to bring everybody up here and show them what's happening here with our war memorial here, our burial grounds, and then directly right here, the city dump and the city landfill. And, uh, you know, it's the biggest slap in the face to our people, uh, as a people, and to our veterans. And I don't, I don't think that the veterans that came to Standing Rock uh, would stand for something like this if they knew that this was going on here. And that's why I, I wanted to bring the, this awareness and uh, try to educate people to what's going on and and how the Ponca people have been treated, the Ponca the Ponca people have never made war against the United States government. That's a fact. We never made war. We honored every treaty, and we used diplomacy to try to keep our homelands in in the north. Um, we were still lied to and cheated and removed from our homelands in in the north and brought here to Oklahoma just to be treated like this once again. Just have a minute's silence for 
all the brave men, women, families put their life on the line. And it's the last thing they did to protect this country and now look at how they're treated. It's disgusting. It's a really hard pill to swallow for anybody, um, but especially for us, uh, people that live here, people that have their, their sons and daughters that are buried here, that have their mothers and fathers that are buried here, grandmothers and grandfathers, brothers and sisters, aunties and uncles. Our, this is where our families are, and uh, we come here to pray. We come here to, to be amongst our, our relatives and, and speak to our ancestors. And in 1890, this particular spot was chosen by our elders because they wanted to be able to come here and pray to the four directions and be able to look to the north, to our homeland in, in Nebraska on the Niobrara and the Missouri River. And uh, we can't do that anymore. We can't look to the north and without seeing this trash mountain, without seeing this, this huge landfill that, that blocks our vision. And, uh, it's just oppressing. It, it's very oppressing to live in these conditions. I think the, the culmination of uh, poverty and sicknesses due to environmental stressors and just just general oppression also leads to the uh, alcoholism and, and drug abuse that takes place and that's that's something that you know I want to stress too that our, our people are are dying of envir from environmental reasons but we're also dying because of the, the alcohol and drug problem that's been introduced into our culture and our society, things that we never had before. And, uh, but I, I directly attribute it to the uh, state of poverty that we're kept in, the state of oppression that, that we live under, and the, the sicknesses that, that people are dealing with in their family, the loss of life due to uh, cancers and respiratory diseases. And uh, it, it just keeps us, it keeps us down and uh, systematically killing us off. I don't really know what to say to you guys, to be honest. I'm when people are talking about asthma and lung diseases, yeah. I mean, there's it's everything you everything everything you see, and it's I, there's some kind of treat water treatment facility right to the. Those are that's one of the leech ponds. That's I was the leech pond. About. Oh, those the, the, surrounded you by can the, see the birds. Behind it. Yeah, so. You guys look there, you see the river shining in the background there. And there's a leech pond here in front. It's kind of hard to see through the windows and stuff. Uh, yeah, maybe give you guys a there's the river. Um, so I, I invite you guys as well to please come and join us later because we're going to be talking with Erin Brokovich um, about some of the other issues around here. But I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm really honored that you, took me around your your homeland and I I don't know what to say to you I feel I feel physically sick right now I'm like I, I we need to stop this we need uh, and as a people we need to stand back up and we need to we need to recognize that together that when we come together that we can do things about this and that if we just keep quiet, if we see these things and we ignore these things and we think someone else will do something about it, then nothing will ever change. I mean, we're passing more fracking wells just to the just to the left here as well. 
I mean, th this land is completely decimated by by the fossil fuel industry and the destruction that comes with it. And you guys out there, you want to know what you can do to help. Right now, you can share this out because the more people that see this, the more people that know about it, the more people that have an option to try and do something about it. You can choose to watch this video and do absolutely nothing. Or you can choose to watch this video and share it. You can choose to watch this video and call some of the people in the council at Ponca City. You can, you, can, you can sit on your couch and you can work those things out. Or you can just sit and you can watch this and then you can go back to your life as though nothing's happened. We all have the choice of exactly what we do. And that may seem rude and if you think it's rude I apologise. But so many times we see things and we decide that it's someone else's job to do something about it. That we don't have to do anything. That It's tragic but there's nothing I can do because that's what we've been taught. And you know we all have the power to do something. We all have the power to pick up the phone and call the White House. We all have the power to pick up, go to our bank and take the money out of the bank to stop funding these things. You know, Conoco 66, Phillips, sorry, uh, Phillips 66 are involved with the Dakota Access Pipeline. There's all these things that you can do to defund um, and, and to stop your money being put against this. You just have to have the choice to go out and do that. Uh, and it may take a few minutes. Maybe you have to do some Googling. Maybe you have to find those numbers and dig through some posts. But you guys all have the ability to do that. So I encourage you to do something today to make a difference. And every day do something to make a difference in your local area. Whether it's simply to pick up three pieces of blowing trash that come across you. Because if everyone starts seeing you do that, everyone else starts doing the same thing. And what Mikasei was talking to me about last night, what could people do? He told me what people need to do is people need to do something within their local area. They need to do something right around them and with their family. And that creates that ripple effect that will then continue to happen. And we'll start to make these changes. Thank you, Caitlin. That's great words. Um, we're going to switch back from uh, the environmental racism back to the environmental genocide. So what you're seeing right here on the right, um, we've gone about a mile and a half to the north from where we were at the cemetery. And uh, we're back up around the Conoco Phillips uh, refinery. You can see the razor wire that we're passing um, to keep, I wish it was to keep the uh, contaminants in, but it, I don't know why they have that type of razor wire to keep us out. Uh, we don't want to go in there anyways. It'll kill you <laughs> to go in there. So we, we don't want anything to do with that. Is this reservation housing right here? We're, we're actually starting into the city of Ponca City, so this is like uh, some low-income white people that live here directly okay. across from the refinery. That's, that's a house, that's the refinery. Yeah. So what I was saying earlier is that each one of these tanks, um, they're called tank batteries. This, this is a tank farm, and each one of these tanks leaks 3% of its holdings, and that's why you see the big dam that, that's built around it to hold the leakage. That leakage goes directly into our groundwater. It goes directly directly into our aquifer. And uh, all the wells that are in this area are poisoned. Um, people can't drink their well water anymore. So they, unfortunately, they still use it to bathe with. And, and some people do, do drink it, even though they shouldn't. Um, they, they can't afford to buy water every day. So um, we're, we're driving up through the refinery right now. We stop we're gonna and show be, people this sign slowly. We, we can't stop. Why not so? We're just uh, we're just going to show you. We're going to slowly go past. Crude oil truck unloading. Um, if you guys are watching, pick up any phone numbers or any company names. Feel free to put some comments on them. We can get those on the feeds. <laughs> Makes sense. Like you can't stop. All right, there you go. Phillips 66 so we pipeline could, operations. We could drive through uh, another mile north here. <laughs> and be passing these tanks and go another mile north and then go right through the middle of town um, through the south side of town and, and go in front of the headquarters I'm going to forego that um, we, we actually can if you feel like it but you can see how far the tanks go they go for another mile north and um, this is basically like um, about four and a half square miles I guess you would call it four and a half square miles of tanks wow and each one leaks legally three percent three percent wow and I'm just 
and there's nothing to, to contain that 3% other than this little dike that's around them that keeps it from leaking out, but nothing to keep it from going down into the, leaching into the soil and leaching into the ground. And uh, can you take a picture of your companion here? Can you show her? <laughs> That's how bad it smells. Right now, still kiss. that is what she's doing to protect herself. Because it smells so bad through this that we're driving through. I mean, it's you can see these smokestacks coming out here. This is absolutely disgusting. Um, it's, I'm just thinking about 3% and, you know, if a pilot leaves, leaves Los Angeles to head to England and he's off by 3%, 3% makes a huge difference. That's not like a 0.1%. That is like a massive, massive, massive difference. So, you know, when you're looking at, let's just say it was 100,000. You're looking at three, up to 3,000. If my mass, yeah, you're looking at 3,000 3, liters being leaked legally. And that can leak straight into the groundwater. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really fancy my coffee with 3% petroleum in it. It just doesn't sound good. And I, I would encourage all of you to look up hydrochloric uh, acid. Hydrochloric acid. I can tell you that stuff. I got that on my hands once when I was doing chemistry. I was a chemistry major back in England. So I know a little bit about that. That's one of the most and, corrosive. And, and sulfuric acid. Uh huh. These, these are being produced in this refinery. And if this leaks, then it kills everybody in a 15 mile radius. Uh -huh. um, my reservation, our, our headquarters is five miles south of here and this is the, the start of the city right here and you know it'll kill everybody in here um what we're showing you right now this is called standing bear park so what we're driving through right now is called standing bear park this used to be a, a housing community this was all this was all houses um all through here this was houses there were city blocks these were city blocks of houses and there, there became this uh, hazardous waste that was bubbling up into the basements of these houses. And they had no name for it other than orange sludge. And it smelled like diesel. So Conoco Phillips, had, or at, the, at that time they were Conoco, had to buy out this entire area. And they bought out all the houses and they bulldozed them and they planted grass, these, these trees, all these trees, these old trees that are here were in somebody's front yard. So they, they left the trees, they bulldozed the houses, they planted grass, and they turned it into a park. Oh, beautiful. So this is actually a hazardous waste condemned area that's not fit for living, but they turned it into a park for people to bring their children and families to come and have picnics. And this, <laughs> beside us right here, this is a, a dance grounds, an arena where they let allowed us to come, uh, the five tribes that were in this area, to come and asked us to put a powwow on once a year here and promote their tourist industry. And for some reason, the tribes signed on and have a powwow here once a year. And there's there's a big festival that goes on here, and everybody comes and breathes the hazardous waste. And uh, it's, it's just really sickening to me what's going on here. And is it, you said it's called Standing Bear, and that that is a, a very sacred name within the within the Ponca Nation. Am I right in thinking yeah. that? Yeah, Standing Bear. Um, let's go over here. We'll talk about Standing Bear. Okay, we're gonna jump out for a second, guys. Oh. for living conditions here and the hazardous waste that was coming up. Um, they chose this point to, to make this standing bear park. And if you can turn around and get a picture of this sign here, and we're actually, I'm gonna show you the memorial of Standing Bear in just a minute. So this is Standing Bear Native American Memorial Park. So get the refinery behind me and the sign there, and I'll talk about Standing Bear. <laughs> yeah. So, where we're standing here is at Standing Bear Memorial Park. And you 
you can see the refinery directly behind me. You can see the smokestacks from the Conoco Phillips refinery. And I just told you about how, how the houses were bulldozed. And I want to talk about Standing Bear. Chief Standing Bear was one of the chiefs when we were forcefully removed from our homelands in Nebraska. Um, how's the sound there? Does this sound okay for you guys? I'm going to try and switch the camera. This is what killed it last time. Let's